Hello everyone, this is Prowl again on another episode of the Bedrock Guide and we in the last episode finished working on this guardian farm. It is so awesome. Let's take a quick peek. And it's working pretty quick. This is after about an hour and a half of AFKing that it's filled up this much. And this isn't this isn't all. Actually, I have a little bit of a problem down in the storage below where things are piling up because the farm's too fast to keep up with two item sorters. So I'm gonna have to figure something out. But that's not what my objective is today. And on the menu today, I wanted to get a little more organized and help you get organized as well. And what we're going to be talking about and doing today has to do with your ender chest and shulker boxes. Any good Minecrafter, not me because I haven't done it yet, will always have an ender chest ready to go with shulker boxes full of materials and things that they use commonly in a build. And we need to get those things together. So let's head over to the storage system and let's start to get things pulled together. We still don't have a storage building. I feel, I, I feel like I feel like today's the day. I feel like this is when it's going to happen. Storage building's going up today too. So first things first, you need to get lots of colors of dye if you really want to be organized. Is this part required? No, because you can also rename shulker boxes, which we'll probably do here towards the end as well. But if you really want to, at a glance, have a have a good look and feel for what you're looking for, dye is the answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to get one of every color dye, and we're going to use that to color one of every shulker box. And then you need a lot of shulker boxes. Luckily, I have a lot of them in here because I've done a lot of end rating in the past and gotten a bunch of these. So we're going to grab them, and then we're going to apply some color to them, which you can do by going over to a crafting table while you have the dye in your inventory and you can just click away and we're just going to go through and make one of each now when you're doing this be careful to not do what i just did three seconds ago and and rename like recolor all of your shulker boxes uh, just go ahead and just throw it on the crafting menu throw the die in with the shulker box manually that way you don't re-die the same one over and over again which is absolutely what i did and next here, we're just going to get organized. You'll see I actually have two of each because with my storage system over here, which I did in a earlier episode, um, we actually left spaces for shulker boxes to go. So I thought it would be a good idea to do double of any sort of shulker boxes that we make. That way we could put them in here and they can get automatically sorted every time we dump materials back into the system in here. That way it's, it's kind of easy to resupply any of our shulker boxes. That being said though, how the heck do you figure out what to put in these things? I think I said earlier, I've never actually done this before. I've, you know, had a bunch of shulker boxes just, you know, sit in my ender chest for periods of time. I've never gone through and actually thought about sorting out all of them before though. So what makes sense to me to do is to start with some of the bulk storage stuff because these are things we use at least somewhat often, right? So we'll go through and we'll grab whatever things here that I feel like need to be grabbed, at least things at some point I will probably use. And then we'll start there. And then we're also gonna try our best to match color. So if I have like stones going somewhere, you know, maybe they'll go in one of the gray ones, right? If I have dirt going somewhere, maybe that goes in the brown. We will always be able to do this because there's there's only so many colors of things, but we're gonna try to start out that way and then we'll have the harder decisions to make a little bit later. But speaking of stones, we'll start with grabbing those actually. And what I don't know really is I don't feel like we need to like include stairs and slabs and all those things, right? Because we can just make those as we go and then sort those back into the system and that'll save us some space. So I think what we can do is we can go ahead and we get those stone in there. And stone is something that I don't really use a ton. I really use it for crafting more than anything. So like crafting different things. So what if we just grab, we'll have just a row of stone. Maybe we'll have a row of cobble because we use cobble. I need to get some more of that by the way, because we don't have enough. 
and then a, a row of these two. Why not? That way we'll have kind of one of everything. Blackstone, don't really use. Deep Slate, I use a decent amount. I don't have a lot of it. We're, we need to go on a Deep Slate mining mission. Stream's going to be happening soon for that. But we can at least get it marked out. So maybe Deep Slate's a little bit darker, right? So maybe we'll go with a slightly darker gray. And I think we'll, we'll probably do a whole shulker box full of the Deep Slate. Glass is definitely a big one. I use a pretty decent amount of glass. I don't know if we're going to need a whole shulker box or not, though. So let's go ahead. Let's just temporarily mark the glass out. And maybe oh, glass is clear. There's no such thing as an invisible shulker box, a transparent shulker box. Maybe we'll just use the plain shulker box for glass. It would make sense. We'll just mark out all the spaces for now. And maybe we'll swap that out and put some white glass in there in a little bit, too. Dirt. Definitely need dirt. Lots and lots of dirt. We'll go, we'll just grab a whole row of that. And I feel like in the dirt one, we should put moss too. I, I don't have any moss. And that's fine. We don't need any moss for this one. I, dirt is something I use enough of to where it would be worth it to have an entire shulker box full of it. So we'll fill that one up. Sand, I don't really use. Gravel, I use gravel a little bit. Let's grab some gravel. But I use gravel for detailing. And... Where do I want to put that? I was thinking we would use this one for moss. Yeah, I think at least for now, we'll use this one as our, our box we do for pathing, right? So we'll put we'll put gravel in here. Um, we have dirt there, um, but we can also put the moss in here and maybe some coarse dirt too would make sense. Coarse dirt, and we'll head into the building here for some moss, which I actually have some in storage. I thought I was gonna have to actually farm some. So we'll grab some moss. Maybe we'll grab, I don't, don't really have any carpets to grab and I don't really have much in here to grab either we are gonna have to spend some time here okay as we're getting some of these done I think I want to move them so like when I get one finished let's just go and let's fill in this one right and then let's put these somewhere else that way it's easier for us to keep track of or like mark off of our list which shulker boxes are all the way complete now let's do woods because we need wood so let's bring all the wood types over here and what can we put them in to where we can stay within some sort of color scheme. I know red's gonna be redstone. I usually do white for rockets. I feel like this will be good for like prismarine and such. Let's do like the darker blue and the lighter blue maybe. The darker blue, let's go. We use a decent amount of spruce. We do like one and a half. One and a half. And then over here we do maybe one and a half. Then we can do this, this, and this. I think that'll work pretty good. That'll get us a pretty healthy amount of wood. Now I gotta make sure I do that to both of these and fill them in with what I have. I already had a redstone box made. So let's just sort this a little bit better. Let me organize this and see what we got. And we're actually gonna break this into two boxes. So we're gonna have one box here that's like, like mostly actual components. And then we'll do another box here that's more of like the things I use with redstone. Like I use soul sand sometimes. I use ice a lot. I use colored blocks for stuff. So to duplicate this and then we need to make a second box i think red and pink will go good together i can remember that those are redstone okay we got this one done too all the things that i typically use when i'm doing redstone uh glass rails iron ice uh kelp for like the water sources scaffolding i don't usually use scaffolding but i should use it so it's in there uh the colored wool it just other miscellaneous bits sub to prowl diamonds if you're making a redstone shulker box, you better put sub to proud diamonds in it. If you don't, you're going to be very disappointed. This one's done. And I can think of a few other things that we can fill in some of these pretty quickly with, I think. Such as andesite, granite, and diorite. Firework rockets. Lots of them. My green stuff box. There we go. That looks good. We should probably make some type of landscaping box where we have a number of different types vines which I, I need to grow zombie who's trying to kill, kill me definitely we'll get some of the flowering azaleas also I feel like we can fit maybe dripstone blocks in here too I like the detail of those 
And bone meal. We definitely need bone meal in here. Actually, let's do bone blocks because that'll take up less space. We'll get more bone meal out of that. So detailing box, I think we could do green. Should I fit some brown terracotta in here too? And maybe some brown concrete powder? I feel like those could fit too. Oh, oh, and these. I need these too. And this. Ah! I don't know what made me think of it, but I just remembered that on the other the other day when Blue Jay was streaming, he pranked me. Oh my gosh. I didn't even see how bad it was. He was getting me back for the guardian trick that we did. The uh, elder guardian. What does this say? You dropped this. I dropped this? This is technically his. I stole it from his farm. Let's take it back. I would really hate to be responsible for Blue Jay looking for these and not being able to find them. So I think what we'll do is we'll put them somewhere where he'll definitely see them. That way he knows we returned them. Right in front of all of his chests seems good. He definitely won't think that we forgot to bring them back to him then. Actually, I borrowed this from you. Here you go. All right, I feel like we did a good deed today. I feel really good about myself now. A lighting box. We definitely need a lighting box. I need to make some torches, but we can fit some of this other stuff in there. All right, we'll have our lighting box, which will have lots of torches. Uh, we'll have some lanterns. We use a lot of those. Candles, which we can dye. And then other miscellaneous lighting sources. Did I have to figure out some way to sort? Did I have a dye box? I feel like we should have a dye box. But I, that's, some of them aren't easy to get. But then I could dye terracottas. And I could dye candles and concrete powders. Do I need a dye box? Let's hold off on a dye box for now. I, I use a lot of terracotta. Let's do a terracotta box. Um, I have, I have three different, I only got three sets of boxes left. Oh no, what do I do? Is this enough? Um, I don't think anything, well those are like bright colors. Let's do black, we'll do black. A row, a row, and a row. Good. All right, this is gonna be one of the harder boxes. I want like a, a decorations box. Like it'll have chains in it and iron bars, flower pots, ladders, armor stands. I've always wanted to use these, but I never know how to use them one. We'll skip that. Profession blocks. Ooh, bookshelves. Turns, sure. Oak blocks, yes. Rhinestones, yeah, why not? I feel like we I feel like we need more. We definitely need more. What else can I do? What else do we need in a decoration box? Smithing tables. Already have blast furnaces, already have grindstones, barrels. Barrels would be good. Okay, we'll sort these things in here in some fashion that I don't quite yet understand. Is that all of them? I think that's everything that I picked. It's laid out a little. Can we switch? This is probably really making a lot of you upset. Hold on. Okay, I fixed it. I fixed it. It's okay. It's okay. And the last one. I feel like this one should be food. But I don't really have... I get golden carrots, but I don't have a lot of them. I don't have an easy way of getting that many of them. So maybe for now, I probably have a lot of cooked salmon. Maybe we'll fill it with cooked salmon for now. And then we'll have to figure out something better for food going forward. Okay, we're over here at the... Is anybody home? This feels like an ambush. Okay, en Endermen have been invading. Um, We could come over here. And I think I have cooked salmon. Nope, that's cod. Nope, that's cod. Nope. I know there's salmon in here. Salmon! I swear there's salmon in here. Ah, cooked salmon. There we go. We can take this out. It does not mess up the XP furnace. I used to think that it did. Maybe sometime it did. I don't know. But, oh. But we can close this thing back up. Now we got our food source. Temporary food source acquired. All right. Well, now that we have a ton of shulker boxes here. Oh, did I do? I didn't do one. Oh, this is gonna be glass? Okay, now that we have all these shulker boxes laid out here, let's get them all in our ender chest and all in here. Oh, and we need to name them. So we have our food shulker, our moss plus detailing shulker, and so on. Let's get the rest of these things named so that way we can move on. So now that we're organized and we have our project shulker boxes here, I think we can go in and finally, after all this time, fill in this big hole I have over here that I've fallen in numerous times since we've made it. And uh, if you guys remember in earlier episodes, 
we would have to do a step down here, I guess. Um, in the earlier episodes, we actually did go through and lay out the whole town area. And part of laying out this town area, we have the like kind of cubish shaped storage building that we were going to build right here. So that's actually what I'm going to work with. And we're going to keep with this design. I do like it. And really the inspiration for this design was because at least from ones that I've seen, like storage buildings are usually like a squarish or cube-ish like shape, just like in real life, modern day. And then also you got like shulker boxes and chests and stuff like that. And this place is going to look kind of cool. It's almost going to kind of like, this is almost kind of like a double chest shape right here. And then this one right here is more like a shulker box shape. So I think we can kind of work with that. And what I like to do, and you guys have probably seen me do multiple times before is if, as I clear a little bit this out, I like to build a little bit of depth in the foundation. So what we can do is we can actually use walls for that. We can go a couple walls, a couple walls, and then put in a couple of these guys right here and then a wall right there. And then when we start to build this together, it gives us depth in the build because we don't have that like flat-ish area that we would otherwise end up with. And we could just try to like space this out evenly in like some way. So like this right here, maybe we can just do that like that. And that looks good. So I'm gonna take this foundation all the way around. And with the foundation up now, we can put down our base block. Uh, any of you that have watched me build before, I always like to have a base block. This is gonna be the predominant color of the build. And I kind of overlay that first before we go through and we do any of the additional detailing, just cause it helps me get a good feel for how the build's gonna look and then where I should put things. So we're gonna stick with stone bricks because it kind of fits the general medieval color scheme of the area. We can't go too, too crazy with the accents and different colors, although we are going to go just a little bit crazy in this particular episode here so stay tuned for that because I do have an awesome design for this building uh, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this whole thing kind of traced in and then we're actually gonna do some varying heights so let me get that in place and talking about varying heights we're gonna actually do that with the cube here so we're gonna actually bring the cube maybe a few blocks above what the rest of this area is and that'll give us extra dimension and make the building look a little bit less flat uh, but we're going to keep it in the same color scheme so everything does look like it goes together at the same time. Then we add in some depth by putting in some pillars as per usual for what I like to do. We're actually going to go a couple up here. And once I get a couple of these pillars in, like so, uh, we're going to add in some additional like color to the build. We need a good accent color to make this thing pop. And we just recently made a farm that got us some dark prismarine. So I was thinking dark prismarine would be the perfect thing to go with. It's going to give us a different texture than what we have elsewhere. And it's going to give us a place to go sleep because it's turning dark. And I don't want to get blown up by creepers. And then just so it doesn't stick out too much, uh, we could take it some dark oak slabs because dark oak blends in very good with spruce that is not stripped. It's almost the exact same color wood. And we can kind of do that. And what it's going to do is it's going to give us a, a slightly like obscured and not too much of that like aqua green, dark prismarine type of look. It gives us just a little bit of it to make an accent. And we'll actually do some other things to accent that even more. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to do all that. And then just to get a little bit better detailing in, we'll have some outcroppings like this just to give us a little bit extra dimension because we're just adding layers in, right? We have one layer two layer, three layers, and we also have depth and we have a uh, texture different too, difference too. And all those things are gonna work together to give us a build that's not boring, looks good. So I said we were going with a cube shape and we are, but we don't want things to stay too flat. So we're actually going to build in an area here where we're going to kind of make the roof protrude up some, but still stick to this cube shape that we're deciding to stick with. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some wood here. We're gonna make some posts. And I need to get that one higher. Right there, I think looks good. Yeah. And then we'll have posts in all four corners. 
And then what I'd like to do is let's take some brown mushroom blocks, which if you've never used these for building before, you should start. You can actually get them by silk touching a brown mushroom and you can obtain the blocks by doing that. If you need to get more of them, it's super easy. It's almost like you do trees, right? You can take a brown mushroom, you can plant it, you can bone meal it, grow it up, and then you have to use silk touch to get the block but it's a really good looking brown tone block. So if you're looking for something like this, I would definitely try the brown mushroom block because it'll probably do you a lot of good. And now we have ourselves a two tone colored building as well. Cause we have, we have the brown mushroom block up top. We have the stone elsewhere and this will give the, the eye like a little something different, interesting to look at. It'll kind of break up that normal monotonous look. And we're going to take the same thing we've done here, if I could pillar up, and we're going to apply this up here as well. And just to give us a little bit of a mix of color, what we'll do is we will top this roof off like so and use the oxidized copper blocks to finish everything up. Take that that way, move this over here, and then right here in the middle. Yeah, and that'll just give us a little bit extra detail just so the roof's not so flat if somebody were to fly overhead or climb up here or something and look at it. We're gonna do what we did here and do it up there. We, we have a solid like base structure now. This thing is starting to look really good and we can start to add in some more details to, to make things feel a little bit more complete. I'm thinking we can kind of like round off these edges a little bit. We can maybe add in some connecting fences through here just to try to add in some extra interest when you're taking a look at it. Let's add in a bit of color. Let's throw in maybe some buttons, warped buttons on the ends here just to kind of cap off these like little outcroppings. And I think that will help add a nice little accent that we didn't, oops, have before. And we could take some fences and run them across like this and that will help make the flat roof look a little bit less flat because yeah, it is a flat roof, so it's supposed to be flat, but we want to have some type of like dimension on it. So I think this will kind of help things out too. And for good measure, let's take some polished deep slate walls, throw these guys on top. And of course now I fell in here and I'm not going to be able to easily get out. Yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, you can see how that looks up there. You see the arches I kind of added in. Let's do this everywhere else. All right, not all that's looking good. I think I'd like to add in some accents, just some like different areas where we can kind of finalize in some color to the build that we don't currently have and just break up these walls a little bit because these walls do feel a little repetitive. So we can put maybe some prismarine here, here, and we can do some warped trap doors there and there like that. And that looks good. So we're gonna add in just a bunch of windows around, just to open a place up a little bit and make it look good. With a majority of the outside now complete, as you see, we got some cool windows in. We got a neat, like unique little design thing back here that I'd use because this was such a big wall. We just need to break that up and make it not so plain. And kind of continuing a lot of the different themes around here where sometimes we use glass and sometimes we use trap doors. Now time to move to the inside and we need to get some floors in, which I'm thinking we're just gonna go ahead and use these smooth stone slabs as our main flooring material, and we're gonna keep things pretty simple. And the way I wanna design the inside of this place, there's two primary features we need to have. We need to have some sort of stairway that goes down to our storage room down below, and then we also have to have I would say at least a some section of storage that we can just come in and drop items off to send them down below to get sorted in the item sorter. And really the first step within that is, is probably, we're gonna need to kind of dig down and I don't even know where I wanna put this. What if we could do something around this bend? I don't even know where this is gonna come out to. But what if we can just do something like this and let's see what's below here. Okay, is there, so? Is there gonna be some way we can stair step this down and use this space? Okay, we'll be able to definitely make this work. It's it's gonna take us down through here. It'll go over top of the redstone here. And then somehow, I don't know how yet, but we'll get it to where we kind of come down like right through here and can hopefully end up in a little hallway that goes in there. Maybe I gotta go from the bottom up now. All right, stairway down is somewhat complete. We'll probably decorate a little bit more at some point. We even, oh, 
just ignore that. And we also have a nice view of axolotls here swimming around. We'll have to make this guy a nice little like swimming chamber here soon. It looks nice and decorated. Uh, now we need to hook up our item input. Not only did I hook up the input, that flashiness is kind of weird. Don't know if you guys see that. Um, but also, I, I've decided to just do a whole lot of work in here. <laughs> we got chests all over the place in a somewhat like disheveled, disorganized fashion. Um, but they're but they're here and I thought that would be kind of cool to not have any sort of like symmetry to it Because that would have a been kind of hard and be limited me to making this place not look like it was very packed and full So we went with the packed and full approach instead and I thought maybe we would just kind of accent this a little bit See how this looks uh, Just to give a little bit extra dimension to the room and make it look a little bit more I don't know planned and purposeful in some way yeah, I think that looks good. It gives it a little bit of support. We'll probably do that up there too. There and there, I imagine. Should we do it up there too? In any event, um, I've, got a, I've gotten so much done, but there's still so much to do. And we don't really have a lot of time left in terms of the episode and what I can put in it. So I'm going to transform the rest of the outside of this place in a live stream, I think. It's almost bedtime for me though, so I'm going to do some tonight and then I'm going to live stream tomorrow morning, finish it up, and we'll get this episode out to you guys on a Tuesday. How does that sound? And I'm here live on stream right now on Twitch, twitch.tv slash prow8413. Go drop a follow right now if you can. Do it. Hit the pause button. Drop a follow. I'm waiting. And we have done a little bit, a lot of bit of exterior work here. Um, I actually did my first ever custom tree, which I think turned out really good. The rest of them I did not do custom, but I wanted to try one out because I've never done one before and I'm pretty happy with it. And then we have a whole bunch of other trees we filled in here because this is supposed to be a park area. And at some point later, I may come in and put some park furniture, maybe a little pond and we need to make the wells here, but we'll probably save that for like its own like section of an episode. So we got random trees around. We got some bushes growing up. Uh, we got some holes in the ground that I'm filling in. All sorts of good stuff. Um, I threw in some vines that'll grow. I didn't want to make this place look too overgrown. Um, also, I realized that this wall is like a big stone wall and probably could have been broken up with some overgrowth. But also, we got to think future wise, this blue area is going to be housing. So it's going to have a house butted right up against it. So I think I'm fine with leaving it kind of flat looking for now because it's going to have a house beside it. It's going to cover some of that up. Um, we did some work to the front here. We bone mealed some grass and thinned it out. Uh, we got a nice big bushy area coming down here where we mix in some uh, azalea leaves of both types with some regular leaves. And I think that looks good. And now it's time to do some RTX lighting because if we take a look at this place with RTX mode on, Looks really good right now, although it's still it looks a little dark even on the outside here just because the the shadow of the sun. So we need to get the exterior lit up well. But if you look at the inside, it's pitch black. Now it's not pitch black with RTX turned off because we hid torches underneath the slabs there. So it is mob proof. There's no there's no mobs that can spawn in here. But we need to get some mood lighting in. I added some in here, like down this little hallway. It feels like a like a dark hallway should feel. But yeah, we got a little bit of work to do. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get on that with stream and we're gonna transform this area. And all of our RTX lighting and the whole build is now complete. I made sure that I thought it looked good and made sense from a lighting perspective with RTX turned off. So we have lights and lanterns just hung in different areas around here. Uh, we have some lanterns in here. I did put a torch right here just for some extra light. I thought it, it kind of looked good and made sense. I accidentally clicked the button right there. Um, and we have torches or lanterns sitting on barrels and just in miscellaneous other places. Even one on a little shelf right here because that area was kind of dark. And let's take a look at what this place looks like at nighttime and first to start let's take a look at the inside during the daytime as you can see everything is well lit uh, we do have lighting under the floor here but remember in rtx you can't visually see it even though it is there so everything is spawn proof regardless where everything is and we have good enough lighting to see pretty much everywhere very easily during the daytime and here we are at nighttime. As you can see, it's a little bit darker in here, but you can still see really good almost everywhere. Looks 
really really good in here there's only one real dark spot maybe a couple there there but i think for it being nighttime in a storage room having some darker spots is fine remember again mobs can't spawn there because those are not spawnable spots the the non rtx lighting everything is nice and bright throughout the whole area then when we travel outside and take a look at this place at nighttime, I think it's lit up perfectly. You can see the building really well. Nothing is overly lit. We didn't spam it with lanterns and such, but we did give it a very decent amount of them. That way everything can show up really well and I think looks really good. We highlighted some of the window areas such as there and then some here in the back as well too. Just to give them a little bit extra lighting I thought would look really good. But overall, this place has come together absolutely beautifully. And this is where we call this episode over. I tried to do things a little bit differently this time, uh, taking some advice from people, ask some advice for from, and really I wanna pack more information and more progress into episodes for you guys. So I tried to do so in this one. We're gonna be spending a lot more time in the Bedrock Guide world. If you enjoyed this episode, please find that like button somewhere down below there and click it. Also, if you could click the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video, please click that too if you have not already. Those likes and subscribes help out the channel immensely. And I will see you all next time. Bye!